I am a service writer at a shop here in town. Uh, so I'm basically the in-between between you and the mechanic. So okay. you bring your car in for an oil change. I told you, you blew it up. And I sell you an engine or something and go about our merry way. What's the toughest thing about your job? <laughs> uh, customers. <laughs> Just dealing with people? Yeah, I would say I'm introverted. Some people can just rub me the wrong way. Like today I had a customer and I really don't want to deal with you at all. <laughs> what are some of the things that, that will take you off with certain customers? Is it just their attitude or is it? I call it the victim mentality. Nothing's ever right. Uh, it's always looked at as a victim perspective. Like every time you talk to them, they're having the worst day of their life. Yeah, you know, I try to hear them out, but sometimes after like, you know, the 30th time, it gets pretty old. It's usually the same people. Like today I had one guy and like, I said, thanks, Dave. And he's like, it's David. <laughs> like, okay, sorry. <laughs> you know, it's like, what, did it really matter that much? <laughs> I guess it must have. I don't know. Some people can just rub you the wrong way. And, you know, some of that is due to the situations I can put myself in. Like I can get myself overworked to the point where the slightest thing or whatever can just tick me off. This is probably the most recent development for me, actually, is thinking about those types of situations differently. I'm I'm very much introverted the same way. Mm -hmm. People people that either talk too much or overshare or I just perceive for whatever reason as not easy people to get along with. Yeah. I have a just sort of my natural face. My natural demeanor is sort of aggressive or standoffish. <laughs> yeah, and maybe that comes from my theology, but <laughs> um, <laughs> I think part of it's just genetic. And I've realized people won't initiate conversations with me, and most of the time, I was perfectly okay with that. Yeah, and I only want to talk to the people that I want to talk to. <laughs> and the reason that I'm not talking to you is because I perceive you for whatever reason as not interesting or not worth my time or just wouldn't be a, uh, a pleasant exchange. I would have to agree with that. Yeah, that's sort of my natural tendency. Working through that, I actually think the Sermon on the Mount has changed my thinking quite a bit. And I think it's extremely helpful to hear this sermon understanding what the law is. Because that's how Jesus' audience would have been thinking. Mm -hmm. They, they understand the law. They deal with Pharisees all the time. The Pharisees, they've added a lot to the law and they've ignored a lot of the law, but they agree that it's good and people do know what's in it. They've just added a lot of traditions to it. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Matthew five thirty eight. You have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. Our pastor gave a sermon on this a few months ago. And at first I was thinking, okay, so is this a backhanded investment opportunity that Jesus is talking about here? <laughs> so let's say some, somebody comes up to me and they steal my shirt and I give them my jacket as well. Let's say then... I call the police on them and I say, officer, this guy stole my shirt and my jacket. And so he <laughs> owes me back four. Cause right. Cause he owes me back double. Yeah, exactly. But then I thought, well, no, you can't say that because you gave him one. So that would be lying. You can't, that would be bearing false witness. So you think, okay, so I, this guy steals my shirt and then I give him my jacket. Then I call the police on him. Now, if he goes through a biblical justice system, which they had were a lot or were a lot closer to, at least in Jesus's day, or would have given verbal assent to it. If he has to pay me back now, he gives me back my shirt, right, which he stole, but then he owes me another shirt. Which he just so happens to have because I gave him one. Uh, <laughs> that's interesting how that works. And so I get my shirt and my jacket back and the robber is going to be very thankful because 
he knows that I was looking out for his interest because when he stole from me, I'm thinking when, when this guy steals my shirt, I think in my head in the future, I'm not sure when this guy is going to need an additional item when God brings justice to this guy. I have never seen that before. That's unreal. And that's a perfect picture of the gospel. Yeah. He redeemed us. So God gets back everything that was originally his and has lost nothing. And so in one sense, you'd think, well, that's kind of a waste for God because God had to do all this work just to get back what he started with. But what did, what did we gain? We gained an understanding of the law. Yeah. And we're not going to do that again. (laughs) And on top of that, now we want to go and do the, the same thing for other people. We act in a redemptive way towards others. I would encourage you when you talk to those people that you know are a pain and you're going to have to, you know, go through mental gymnastics to try to make these people happy. When I see unhappy customers, that's my, I I need to think more of that in terms of a, of an investment opportunity. Those are the tough customers that if you go the extra mile, they will probably recommend your business like crazy. Yeah, that's true. Because they're probably hard to get along with people everywhere else, I would imagine. (laughs) I would imagine as well. (laughs) And so the norm for them is everybody hates me. I'm always having a bad day and it's their fault, which is, yeah. And that's true. No wonder you're having a bad day. (laughs) So when somebody goes the extra mile for them, at least give it a shot. If you go the extra mile for them and then they turn around and they hurt you or they insult you, then, okay. Yeah. They, they probably don't need to come back. (laughs) Um, but I think most people will probably respond very positively. That's a good perspective. I always try to grit through it or something, but I I do need to change my perspective on it. When you can tell that somebody is going to take a lot out of you when you deal with them, Mm -hmm. all you have to do is think this person's not taking anything from me. I'm going to give it. I never thought about it that way before being prepared, especially. Yeah. It really changes your perspective and dealing with people too, because then all of a sudden everybody is interesting and everybody is amazing. (laughs) Yeah. And there's always a reason why they're acting like a jerk or an idiot. And if you can do a little, just a little digging and always have a winsome attitude of, I don't care whatever it costs, I'm going to try to help. Mm -hmm. It can make things a whole lot less stressful. And for me, just over the last month, I'm not stressed out as much as I used to be. Are you you in some sort of sales yourself or? Uh, It's really interesting that you should ask that. I've I've recently discovered that I'm a very good salesman. Uh, I was not in, I was not in sales before, but I literally just had somebody approach me and roped me into his business. And literally the first email that I sent out on this guy's behalf, doing stuff for his business, I almost made a $14,000 sale for a video project. Nice. (laughs) And the biggest, the biggest video project that I had ever sold on my own behalf was a 2000. Wow. So a seven times increase. And we almost, we almost got it. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to happen now, but Yeah. Now I'm a whole lot better at diagnosing people's problems. Sure. I appreciate your time, Adam. I really do. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Thanks for talking.